Folks, please accept our apologies for Br Fox and Br Bear. They can't help getting into mischief. And we're mighty sorry that you can't continue your visit to Splash Mountain just now. to WD Magicast for the week of January 22nd, 2023. This is episode 212. WD Magicast, the show about the mouse, the marvels, the galaxy, and beyond. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. In this week's show, Dave and I sit down and fondly remember Splash Mountain at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. And we talk about the past how it came to be, some of our memories, and what potentially to look forward to in the near and distant future for when it's being worked on and when it's eventually created into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I did take a survey, however, and polled everyone out there about, this was on Twitter, but I did put links on Instagram and on the Facebook about what are your feelings towards the closing of Splash Mountain in Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom? And the options being mad, heartbroken, upset but hopeful, and absolutely okay with it. And lots of you came out and voted. Lots and lots of people put their votes in. And I didn't really explain on... Well, not because it's Twitter, so I can't really put much of an explanation, but mad. I mean, some people are just, you know, could be completely upset and mad that you're, you're taking away my favorite attraction and you're replacing it. But think about it whenever they close Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, which I allude to in the, the episode, that there was, there was sit-ins and there was petitions and, um, and stuff. But, you know, some people get really passionate about their attraction. So 20% of you, said that you were mad about it. 24% said you were heartbroken. 25 said you were upset, but hopeful. And the winner, or the most receiving votes, is 31% said you were absolutely okay with it. Glad to hear it. Because, well, you can't really do anything. It's, it's changing, it's closed. The walls are up already, and, well, there you have it. And on that bombshell, we'll be back after these words from our friends and sponsors. Hey, Matthew, Jim Hill here. I do the Marvelous Disney Podcast with Aaron Adams over at the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network. I know, I know, very humble-sounding name. Uh, anyway, I really enjoy what you've been doing over on the Disney Marvels podcast. Uh, but as you probably already noticed, the Marvel Us Disney and the Disney Marvels podcast names are very, very similar. Which is why I imagine I keep getting mail for you. Um, that's actually why I'm calling today. I wanted to know what you'd like me to do with all of these Yankee Candle catalogs. Uh, so uh, please get back to me. Uh, oh, and uh, keep up the great work with the Disney Marvels podcast. Thank you for those kind words, Jim. And make sure to check out Jim Hill on the Marvel Us Disney podcast with Aaron Adams to find out all sorts of wonderful things about Disney, well, Marvel uh, particularly, what's going on with them. And Jim, uh, those catalogs, I'll make sure to give you the forwarding address. And uh, unless if you want to order something, go right ahead. And once again, make sure to check out Marvel Us Disney with Jim Hill and Aaron Adams, wherever you find or listen to your podcasts. And now, on with the show. As I've often quoted Walt Disney, Disneyland was never meant to be a museum. 
and so forth with any of the parks. They were never meant to be a museum. And what he means by that is that things are always going to be changing. Uh, new attractions come in, new and attractions go away to make way for other new attractions. There's only so much space. So that being said, so goes Splash Mountain. By the time you will be hearing this episode, Splash Mountain and Walt Disney World would have seen its last day of operation, um, which would have been Sunday, so, uh, January 22nd, which happens to be the day that we're recording this episode. And like so many fond memories of the past and things changing to make way for the future, Dave has joined me to discuss our farewell to the iconic, the happy, the zippity doodah of Splash Mountain. <laughs> Hello, Matthew. Thank you for having me once again. Uh, yeah, I look forward well, to... Thank you for being on once again. Once again. Hey, not a problem. I look forward to talking about the history of Splash Mountain. <laughs> history or, or memories or let's just talk Splash Mountain. Or just talk Splash Mountain. But it doesn't have to be the deepest of deep dives. True. Exactly. But, yeah, it's... um. But what is your thought of the attraction? Is this an attraction you like? Is it something that you could pass on? In the, the times that I've gone to the parks, to, you know, Magic Kingdom, um, it would be one of those things where did I feel like getting wet and then walking around in 90-degree weather in wet clothes. So it was hit or miss. You know what I mean? Like, I think we went on it. And that was fine because we were knocking out a bunch of the rides and stuff like that. But if I was just taking my family, me, my wife, and my kid, we probably mm-hmm. would skip it. You know what I mean? Because we've done it and there was other priorities to, to, to get on besides Splash Mountain. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. For us, it, it, uh, it was usually – it's one of the kids' favorites. So it was usually more of a priority. But, again, depending on the ambient temperature, mm-hmm. weather uh, – would play a factor if it was it was a colder day um yeah no it's you know you you don't necessarily want to get wet sometimes getting wet cools you off um and in the florida you, you know you you dry off sometimes fairly quickly other times not so much um the last time that i was i was just on a november and uh, i got soaked right down to the bone uh and it, it's you know it lasted for a little while but mm-hmm. eventually it would it, it I dry it off. Well, wasn't it like it was hit and miss that ride? Like you can come off it like perfectly dry, or you come off it soaked, right? Like it was there was never, I guess depending on where you sat on the on the actual uh, log was the you know if you sat on front you're probably going to get soaked. If you sat in the back you might have dodged the bullet. Yeah, my daughter Paige and I were in the front row, mm-hmm. so we got the full brunt force of the wave. Yeah, uh, the bow wave and anything splashing over the side, where people further back were fine. Right, a couple rows back, where you know didn't really get much. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, right. that that was uh, that was my misfortune this time around. That I uh, I got the the full brunt force of mm-hmm. uh, Chick Ben Hill. Well, you see, for me, and I think what what might take away from what I said about not wanting to get on it, like every time I go there, would be again our local Six Flags Great Adventure had a ride that was similar to it. I forgot what it was called, but you could, it was like, you could stand on the bridge and the thing was come down and splash down yep. and you get, I forgot what they called it, what they would Yeah. I don't, I forget, you know, so, but having one like five minutes down the road that you can always get on all the time. And then you go to Florida, you're, you've been there, you've been on something similar already at home. So you try to get to, you know, the other rides that you haven't been on down there. Yeah, but you can't say that the one at Great Adventure is as much fun as. No, no, obviously not. But it's still the it's still the point. You go on a log, you can splash down. That's it. It's the same yeah. thing. <laughs> go in the backyard, get someone with a bucket, and <laughs> right. <laughs> We're gonna reenact the ride in the backyard. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was I think during COVID, someone did that. What well, they did. Uh, a reenactment at home video of of Splash Mountain where they're getting pulled around and, and, and right. something. But there was a number of those videos going around. I, I want to say someone did Splash Mountain. Right. I know they did uh, Haunted Mansion and a few others. I want to mm-hmm. say Splash Mountain was one of them. Yeah. Those were enjoyable for the time that we couldn't go anywhere. Right. 
Well, because the thing too is like it's located next to the, the what's that uh, the big thunder rolling whatever big thunder thunder railroad yeah Red thunder railroad and so like for me I'm sitting there going I would rather if I'm gonna because you're probably gonna have to wait the same amount of time to get on either ride you know give or take a few minutes I think I would I'm more the roller coaster person so I would want to spend my time waiting for the you know the roller coaster than the splash mountain one but that that's me that's fun yeah you know. To my kids, it's one of their, their top favorite rides. It, it's always been a f- favorite ride of mine. I remember thinking back, going back, back, way back to 1990-ish, going to Disney World and watching them build this thing. Mm. And it was another, just like what they did with Tron, they had to, uh, they didn't actually stop the railroad. So the railroad would run, but it would have to, Half the time, the train would be going backwards, and then it'd go forwards again because they couldn't make the full loop. Mm-hmm. So that time, that's what they did la- that time, uh, where this time they just shut the railroad road altogether um, and literally rebuilt the engines. I mean, from my understanding, they stripped the engines down to each little individual part and rebuilt them completely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all of them, or maybe two out or all but one um in the meantime so that's why they've been closed for so long and then you had COVID and all that stuff happened in between mm-hmm. but uh yeah that, that time because they this attraction sits right over the tracks in fact wherever you're going through um on the train you can see into it you see some of the the water pumps and you could look down into into the attraction and then that goes into that's where the tra- the train station for Frontierland used to be where Splash Mountain is, and they had to move the whole train station. So they had to build a new train station. They had to build the attraction around the tra- track. So that's that's why they shut that down for a, a little bit. Um, and then just uh, this massive 87-foot-tall structure mm-hmm. uh, you know, popped up in just a couple of years. It took them three years. Tron, it seems like it's been 50 years. I know, I know. Well, COVID delayed that, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So COVID yeah. slowed that down. But even in Guardians of the Galaxy was another, you mm-hmm. know, 75 years for Guardians. Yeah. Um, yeah, different times, different things. But this is uh, this has been quite the attraction. attraction um, first copy of it was in Disneyland, July 18, 1989, is whenever its first welcome guest on board. Disney World, July 17th, 1992, so almost three years later, exactly. And I, I've always found it a fun ride. It's a bright, lively ride. There's some dark, darker moments leading up to the to the drop. Mm-hmm. But it's the music to it, the the theming, the the fun characters. Um, it's something that I always. I always enjoyed it as a kid. Now I understand that, as you know, in retrospect, people are looking at things as far as historical and what it means um, to the attraction. And even I think when they when they built it, um, it was kind of like, okay, we got this. Do we really want to use this IP? But it works, so we're we're going to go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's how we ended up where we are today. Where we're we're not losing the ride per se. We're losing the theming of the ride, and it's just getting whole new story elements and in, in theming that way. But yeah, you know, things need to get refreshed. I mean, look at uh, great movie ride in Hollywood Studios. Mm-hmm. Close that one down. And uh, now it's Mickey and Minnie, and that's another. It's a fantastic ride. That's a phenomenal ride. Yeah, that's a massive upgrade on that one. Yeah, but I mean, they completely rechanged that one. This one, we're still getting the same track because you really. Yeah, because you can't really change that. Concrete. It's very yeah. hard to yeah. to change that out. And the train, the train's fine, right? That's not going to be affected, right? Because they did move it off. Or is it going to be? Are they going to have this? Wouldn't think the train should be affected too much with it. Um, because most of it's going to be internal, right? Uh, maybe a couple of days here or there, but internally, it's it 
everything's going to be changed internally. There's some theming elements on the outside that they're going to have to change. Uh, so maybe KJ having to bring a crane in to, to remove certain fixtures and uh, add other ones because they're taking off um, the top of the attraction. You still got a little bit of the hill, but they're taking off the, the wooden barn that you come out of. Um, and they're trying to make it less mountain-like because in the bayou, you don't have mountains. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, the, Rudy, they, they were going to keep the Splash Mountain name, per se, in the Tiana's Ty- Bayou Mountain or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're, oh, wait. You don't have mountains here. Yeah. Um, so, that's why they had to, to change it to Tiana's Bayou Adventure or something like that. Um. The Splash Mountain name actually comes from um, Mike Weisner. My, uh, this was they were pitching this attraction when Splash was out, and Splash was a, mm-hmm. a big to do, and he wanted the attraction to have more elements of Splash in there. It's like, well, it's not Splash isn't the type of movie that we can make a log from right off of um, and make it family friendly and whatnot. So we'll, we'll call it Splash, even though it's. It, not going to have anything from Splash to do in it. Right. But it, it's a good play on it. And someone suggested the word mountain, and then boop, there you go. Because uh, I think it was before Exhibiting Doodah's River Adventure, I think was the their idea in the name or something like that, which didn't quite flow as well. And it, it, you know, Splash Mountain just has that draw. It tells you everything you need to know about the attraction mm-hmm. in two words. Yep. And it, it that would. I'm assuming people walking by Splash Mountain. What's that? I'm going there. You know what I mean? It's more of a draw than like if you said something that was what was it? Zippity doo dah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna probably Zippity keep on zippity doo dah walking. <laughs> well, look at look at that zippity doo dah there. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, exactly. It's not that much you of a keep your zippity doo dahs to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. I'm trying to see if I can find what the that name was, but yeah, it's it's Chickapin Hill. That's the name of the the mount uh, the the drop. But for this, I'm assuming it's going to be like um, one big massive uh, paint job. Um, I'm assuming the the log flumes are going to be changed into something else. Yeah, they're going to change up the 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 ride vehicles. Um, they are going. to obviously change out the animatronics the animatronics uh theming elements because if they do that if they're the more modern ones like you saw in like with the frozen ride and in the the mickey mini thing if it's like that then it's going to be spot on it's going to look fantastic yeah it's oh here's the name zippity zippity river run the zippity river run yeah no it does just doesn't flow no flow quite the same as splash mountain no. Um, yeah, I, my understanding is it's going to be mostly animatronics, um, which is going to be interesting because the current animatronics are built into the concrete of the attraction because they couldn't use wood to build this because you have wood and water all the time that you know doesn't that doesn't spell out too well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is uh, it's so it's mostly concrete. So that's going to be the biggest trick in trying to. To fix this up um and the, again this was built early 90s so the, the the wiring and the mechanisms for the animatronics for then is not what they use now so how to it's it's even though they proposed this a while ago there's a reason why it's taken this long to get things going mm-hmm. because of just the the amount of questions and issues that are involved in trying to refit a 31 year old attraction yeah 31 yeah which is a good run you know yeah i mean lasts a lot longer than than some Mm -hmm. but it's still a beloved attraction still gets lines up the you know daily you know hour plus lines um it's just it's sad when i want to see it in november because knowing that it's going to to be closed out 
that they haven't done the maintenance that to keep it up. There's a uh, sections that the lights were not on. Uh, you know, the, they were dark. Oh, they didn't want to put the time in to keep it up to date, so that the time uh, and the money. Yeah. You know why are we going to replace this? Why we're ripping it all out? You know, yeah. Uh, certain effects and animatronics weren't working. Mm-hmm. So it it was it was actually very unfortunate to have that as your last memory. Yeah. I mean, you, you still got to go on it, still got to enjoy it, but to see it not how you've seen it so many other times in the past, right? Um, is 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 a little disconcerting. It's a little sad, but I still got to see it. Um, I I did bring my GoPro along on the the last run, so I I do have it footage of your last time on it. Yeah. yeah. I do have a, a uh, permanent memory. It's kind of like, what was it? The, uh, what ride were we on? I think it was Mr. Potato Head. You, got, you guys were with us. I think when Mr. Potato Head was leaking the oil and it was doing its thing and then it stopped because it was leaking the oil and fluid and then they had to pull the curtain <laughs> to close them off. Were you with us? Oh, no, we were. I don't think we were with you for that. that was, but yeah, that was uh, Toy Story. Oh, that might have been in January when we went yeah, you know, the second time. Went, yeah, yeah, we were. I, I, it was, yeah, the Toy Story thing. And it, it, you just see Mr. Potato Head was doing his thing, and then all of a sudden he just slowly started slowing down. And I don't know, one of his lines broke uh, loose or something. And all the. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, if that was the last time you're going out there, that's like, oh my God, what happened, Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's he's leaking potato oil. Yeah. <laughs> Traumatize your young ones. <laughs> no, not Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I I think one of the for me one of the favorite parts is the music. Mm-hmm. I, I I love the music of Song of the South. As as controversial as anyone says uh, that stuff is, but to me like Zippity Doodah is like a quintessential Disney song. Mm-hmm. It's one of those songs that um, just kind of gets you going and, and puts you in a good mood. Um, laughing Place is fun. Um, so you, you just you have some nice music with it. And you, know, you got your fun, loving woodland creatures. With the whole controversial stuff aside, just saying you have the aesthetically. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun-loving little little creatures. Um, I mean, in it may you know as sad as it is. I mean that it is it takes place in a darker part of our country's history. That, that you unfortunately is something you you cannot change. So I don't think there's any mistake that there you know it is getting replaced by Tayana's Ty- uh, storyline and, and characters, which is going to be interesting because it takes place after the movie. So yeah, um, so the it's not going to be based on. So you're using Tiana in that family of characters, mm-hmm. but it's not based on Princess and the Frog. Okay, it's <laughs> after the fact, um, and it's going to probably have a little more connection to the Tiana shorts that are going to be coming out. I think. This year, ah. in, the, in the next several months. Okay, that I did not know. That, that's yeah, funny. so you're gonna see some like her style and her look in these shorts is gonna be what you see in this attraction. I guess in some ways it's gonna be a little more like, you know, when you go on Frozen in Epcot, mm-hmm. go away. Yeah, it it doesn't take place during Frozen. It's uh, it's obviously set after the fact, right. and you're just you're going along and seeing these characters and interacting with the yeah. characters a little bit, and they're singing the songs and you're going through. I'm wondering if it's going to be a little more like that. Again. More like I that. don't really yeah. know anything, but I, I'm just I'm just one I'm just wondering here. No, it makes sense. Like they're taking their characters, putting it in there, but it's set in a theme or a story that's not the movie. It's its own separate little adventure. I got it. Right. Yeah. At one point, I heard the the potential story was that. Um, Lewis lost his trumpet, and you're going along with Lewis to try and find the trumpet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's now also been put to the to the wayside for something else. So we shall see. 
we shall yeah. see where they go exactly with with all of that. Um, yep, yeah, the drop is still going to be the 52 and a half foot drop. That's not changing. Still going probably about 40 miles an hour. I don't know if they're going to change the splash factor at all. Because that was something I believe they actually were able to control. What do you mean, like how big of a splash you can get? Or yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see about that. I liked, and I'm hoping they don't get rid of this, but I don't remember seeing in the photos of. You would think you would it. think going to the, the splash factor. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sidetrack, but the, no, would, during during the summer and the heat, you, they you would think they would crank it up to get people more soaked because it's the summertime, and then on the cooler days they would ramp it down a little bit, so you're not <laughs> walking around frozen in the parks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what all is involved in the mm-hmm. in that. Um, uh, it looks like they are. Uh, well, it's hard to tell. I, I was hoping that. At the end of the drop, they'd still have the giant briar patch, but it looks like they may be changing that up. Because I always like that that effect. Mm. But, you know, you see the log drop, but you don't see where it ends up. Oh, I see. Just yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're going to remove that, so you're going to be able to see them drop throughout the whole thing. Is that what we're talking about? Um, it looks like they're they're replacing with like foliage. Mm. So kind of more of that swampy bayouish okay look. And they're trying, you know, they have to add in more trees. Yeah, they're adding, it looks like they're adding in more trees, more greenery and stuff to give it that again more bayou look, and also to try and reduce the the height look. So it doesn't look as as tall. I mean, Portrait is actually only 87 feet tall. It looks taller because of forced perspective. Mm-hmm. But when you consider that the castle is 196 feet or something around there, yeah, this isn't actually all that tall. Now, how does that does this affect? It's in Frontierland, right? That's where. Yes. Does that affect that side of the park in any way? Meaning, like, foot traffic-wise, if you're trying to walk around to get to the other attractions that are in Frontierland. It shouldn't. It shouldn't because it is set off to the side. Now, its entrance is right next to Big Thunder Mountain's entrance, but... You're going to be able to wall that section off enough that it, um, it may put a little bit of a squeeze to get mm-hmm. to Big Thunder Mountain, but it's not going to be going to be that bad mm-hmm. um, the, the question will be the train station yeah I'm trying I haven't gone off at that station in a while so I don't remember what the pathway is um, oh if you get off the train station are you going to be able to get right because over the, you know, I thought it was kind of through the splash mountain area but I'm I'm, I'm not yeah, I'm not remembering because it's so you good. might not the train might still be operate operate operational as as usual, but you might not be able to get off at Frontierland. You, it's going to there's keep... a possibility of right. that. Yeah. Uh, or you take the picture here. I'm looking at the satellite shot. Train goes around. This is there. It's pirates. There's Splash Mountain, there's a train. Um, no. No, it, it's off to the side as well. So, looking at the, the aerial shot, it shouldn't affect too, too much. Mm-hmm. As far as as flow for all that, I mean, and that's got to be tough because they're probably gonna most of their time they're gonna get to to work on that. I would assume would be in off hours, right, when the park's not open. A lot of it will be uh, they'll be doing stuff at night. Um, it's well, it's like Tron. It's, it's going to be day and night probably type of situations, uh, depending on how the the speed of the project goes and the budget and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna have the seg work on the outside. Which is going to be the most intrusive to the story, um, well, the story going on, the show going on at, at Magic Kingdom. Mm. Um, 
but the bulk of the work is indoors. Right. So that that isn't going to be as as intrusive to the show going on in the in the park. So mm-hmm. to the guests and whatnot, they're not gonna not gonna see that as much. Right, but I'm just thinking like just the the massive amount of crowds that go to Magic Kingdom on a daily day basis. You know what I mean? It's got to be hard to renovate it, something it's like a that. People eater. I mean, I yeah. I don't I don't remember the exact number of people that uh, go on this attraction. It's a 12 minute attraction. You have multiple uh, logs going at a time with two, four, six. I believe eight people. Mm-hmm. I think there's four rows per log. Um, so it is a higher flow capacity attraction so that, um, it, it, those people are going to have to go somewhere. So it's going to reduce the capacity level of the, of the magic kingdom, uh, four rows, two per log. Yes. Mm -hmm. So eight people. Um, and then you have just a guesstimate of eight to 10 logs going at a time. Mm-hmm. Two loading, one on the hill, one, two or three inside. Yeah, I mean you. So that's that's quite a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So say you have it's, it's ten, that's eighty people, and you're cycling that through. And it's a twelve minutes, eleven minutes. So that's only you know ten minutes. That's eight, eight times ten. So a little less than 800 people an hour. That's a lot. Roughly. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's actually more than that. Because I, um, but I, 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 again, I don't have exact numbers in front of me. This is just off the top of my head. Yeah, I didn't think of that. So those, that, those 800 people per hour are now going to go elsewhere. They have to be elsewhere. So that's going to, now you do have Tron opening up. So that's going to pull the gravity <sighs> of the park. To the opposite side, so people more people are going to be stuck in Tomorrowland, um, dealing with Tron. But I mean that. Well, Splash Mountain's already closed. Tron doesn't open up till April, so this is a lower point because there's no real holidays or anything going on. Tron's opening up in time for spring break, intentionally. Oh, um, so you the, imagine? You know, yeah, you got all that. <laughs> you got that figured out. So. In the meantime, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a an extra push or an extra strain on the other attractions until Tron opens up. But it is it is not going to be as busy at the park now as it is going to be come the spring and summer. Yeah. Tron will be open up then, so that's going to pull some people into that. So... Now, granted, they're going to be doing the virtual queue. It's not going to be people lining up as much. So it's not going to be as much of a gravity pool as it would be if it just was a standard line and everyone right. was just waiting two hours yeah. for that attraction. Good. You, you just brought me back in because I was losing hope of getting on Tron when I go in August. But now they were, with the vir- you reminded me of the virtual queue. So uh, there's hope. <laughs> so you say there's a chance. There's a chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed so um uh, yeah it, it, it's yeah it's going to affect the the gravity and the flow of the park uh a bit besides the construction walls besides the noise besides the the intrusion of all of that mm-hmm. um so you have a big attractor for that area so that's gonna increase the lines to pirates to um yep, pirates Big Thunder Mountain and to Haunted Mansion because those are the other big attractions mm-hmm. over there. Yeah, immediately within that that area. So uh, expect to see lines increased to some extent on those those attractions and, until until it's it's when did they did they did they give a uh, estimation as to how long the renovations are going to last? They did. I don't believe them. Um, I believe the what is. 24 sometime in 24 i believe uh let me see if i can find that out quickly so give or take a year they're thinking yeah right now it has a three hour wait um 
Oh, uh, Splash Mountain? Really? Has a three hour wait? Yeah. Because <laughs> it tells the last day. Everyone it's it's like, yeah. Wow. Would you wait three? If you were there, would you wait three hours to get on it one last time? No. <laughs> Come on, where's that dedication, Matthew? <laughs> if I solely went there with the intent of I'm doing Splash Mountain, and if I get to anything else, that'll be great. Right. Uh, but my primary reason to do is is going to be Splash Mountain. I've gone there super early, and then yeah, I, I guess I could have done a three hour wait. Right. Um, as if I was with my family, no. Yeah. They, they would not go there. <laughs> yeah. June thirtieth, twenty twenty four is the projected. Projected. Okay, so give it. T- it's about a year and five months. They're saying that they can get it done. All right. Yeah. Because they're not. They don't have to rebuild the the show building. Yeah. It's just re- retrofitting everything inside. <clears throat> uh, and they're not even really relaying the track. So. So are you saying when you say are you saying that they'll get it? You don't think they're going to get it done by June, or it's going to take them longer, or do you think they'll get it done faster? Um. Being that, being that all the groundwork's there, they just have to redo everything. Do you, you know, I mean, I, I know you're not in the uh, attraction building business, but <laughs> I, I would, I would like to say that they're going to get done right on time. Everything's going to go perfect. They may even finish up sooner, but just knowing usually their their window and time frame and how things work, yeah, I expect it to have to get pushed back some. Mm-hmm. I mean, may, will they necessary? Will they finish it by in twenty twenty four? I think there's actually a, a decent chance. Mm-hmm. Will it be June? We'll see. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I playing devil's advocate. I'm I'm going to say no because everything always takes them longer than they say it's going to take. So if you're planning a vacation in the summer of twenty twenty four, you don't expect that to be one of the attractions that you can get on. I I wouldn't hedge my bet around it. Okay. You know, to plan and say this is the big thing we're doing. We're going because it's going to be the new Splash Mountain's going to be there. Right. There's a chance, but yeah. okay. There's a chance I'll win the lottery too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, given the two, I'd rather take the money. <laughs> Show me the money. Take your take your sweet time on, on the ride. Make sure it's all done right. I'll take the money and run. <laughs> Uh, yeah um so it, it, I, i'm looking for, will i miss splash mountain absolutely I, am i looking forward to the the new attraction yes i mean it to me it's also like when they had mr toad's wild ride and i still miss mr toad's wild ride i i that was one as a kid that was one of my favorite rides growing up and that went away and they replaced it with winnie the pooh <laughs> Is Winnie the Pooh a bad ride? No. Is there nods to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride there in, our, in other parts of the park? Yes. Do I still miss Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've gone back and watched some videos of it. I know it's still available in Disneyland. And, you know, it, as you grow up, your, your memory or... Your perspective as a kid of how something is to how your perspective as an adult of how something is yeah. is quite different. Oh yeah. Um, so as a kid, this you know is the most fantastic, wonderful thing in the world, and then you see it as an adult, and you go, "What the heck was I thinking?" <laughs> you just kind of turn your head a little bit and go, uh, "Okay, look, I don't remember it that way." But yeah, yeah. Is the uh-huh. overhaul like Disneyland in in uh, California is changing it too? How about and, and Tokyo? They are they all all across the Disneyland California? Yes. Mm-hmm. Tokyo? No. Tokyo um, is keeping theirs exactly the way it is mm-hmm. um, for now. The the Oriland Ori because Disneyland uh, Tokyo Disneyland is not owned by the Disney Corporation. It's owned by the Oriental Land Corporation. Okay. Um, and they license the park out, so they have mu- they have more say in what happens. Is Disneyland on the same time frame? Like, are they shutting it down t- as of today, or are they on a different? Uh, there are a slightly different time frame, and to be honest, I haven't figured out found out what theirs is. I don't even remember if they mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is. I don't think it's on the same time frame. Right. Uh, I would be shocked that they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
But I mean, our, our focus is more on the Florida one because that's the one we frequent as opposed to flying across the country to the other side. Yeah. Um, I believe the thought process at the moment is they are doing Florida first. They're going to do Florida first before they switch and move the focus to California. Hmm. I wonder if it's one of those things where they finish it here and then send that crew that put it together here over there and let I them work it. That, yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's the reverse, though, because wasn't it? It was it was the, it was put together first in Disneyland. Right. And then it came yep. and then three years later, I think it was over here in Disney World. Right. So they're reversing it now. They're getting it here first and then flipping it over there. <laughs> Take that, California. No. <laughs> We got ours first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing anything for Disneyland as saying specifically. Mm -hmm. Disney World, yes. Wait, 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 what's this? This is special. Oh, maybe it is, because this one's saying that it is today's date, January 23rd, 2023, final date for the attraction at Disneyland in Southern California. Oh, it's real? Okay, so going by that or shutting it down across the board then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not as on top of the Disneyland news as I am on Disney World stuff. Yeah. My apologies. Sorry, folks. Have you ever, I think I asked you this before, but have you ever gone out to Disney, Disneyland? No, or no? I haven't made the pilgrimage. The trip, yeah. It's different. You know what I mean? It's just, it's smaller. You know, when you well, see the right. castle. A, yeah. Oh, you're not going to like it because it's smaller. No, 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 no. I, I know it is smaller. Yeah. But th there's, you know, it, it's also Waltz Park. Right. It's the same, but different. You know, when and you they get. They do have different attractions. Right. It, it's not all the same attractions um let's see i ain't seen anything on disney park blog well so the thing is like if my brother-in-law didn't live out there i wouldn't been i would have never made the trek out there to go there because i just it, florida is just easier two hour oh, flight true. as opposed to a five hour flight you know what i mean <laughs> it is a slight difference and you know big time especially when you're traveling with family <laughs> yeah that is true um Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on there on the websites either. On the press sites. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, but uh, Tiana's place, I got that, yeah. No, I'm not seeing about anything official when that all is. They may have not said a while ago and just mm. I missed it. Um now, the, anyway. side, the, the Tron attraction that's coming, that they built now, is that all new property that they extended off of? Or was yes. that something that they had to shut down and redo? No, that that is um, extended land. There was a, uh, I'm trying to remember. I believe that it was, the, there was a bit of a parking lot. And was it part of the airport? I'm trying to remember if it was part of the airport. But it was, it was just it was just kind of unused land behind Space Mountain. Space okay. Mountain's technically outside the berm of uh, Magic Kingdom as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they did. The same thing with Tron. Tron is outside the berm area. Um, so really, actually adding additional property or uh, square footage to the to the park. And um, they built that off of there. There's a little bit of land. That they they had to take, uh, but minimal. Most of it's all brand new. It's a new show building, the new, completely new ground area. Mm. Um, there was nothing there before. Because I'm assuming at this point, with all the parks, it's kind of hard for them to extend outside their borders that they're on now. Correct. It becomes tricky. Um, 
in certain areas because of back of stage stuff. Uh, in Florida, you have water runs. You say um, is it like swampland or something around there? Yeah. Some, yeah. So uh, that's that's one of the things that they're saying. Oh, we're um, this pie in the sky idea of building on the other side of Haunted Mansion and um, Tom Sawyer Island behind Big Thunder Mountain, that whole area. You can, there is land there for them to develop, but there's also a waterway that runs the side of the park, uh, which is where they keep um, the the, um, water pageant show that runs the lagoon at night. That's kept along there, and I think it's a service area and a drainage area. So there's a whole waterway that runs along the side there. So you do kind of run into a barrier. Now, could you always build a bridge and go off of that? Yes. And then there's there's other stuff back that way, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you do run into some issues. Again, if you now going to the other side, Tomorrowland, um, you can go so far there. But there's roadways that lead to... Lead to um, Windermere and the the towns behind there, the houses behind there, um, the monorail maintenance station is back that way. Uh, again, more back of house stuff. So yeah, you can push out, but again, only so far, so far. Yeah. before you start running into other things and, and <laughs> intruding into stuff. Um, Epcot, the same thing, same thing. You got waterways uh, hotels that you've built back there now um roads and stuff that go around the park so you you can only push them out so far well what did they do with guardians in epcot was that did was that a push out or was that a um a section it was a push out um into the parking lot into the parking lot yeah now, do you think because of the Skyliner and stuff, they, they said, okay, we don't need as much parking, so that's why they could push out a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, it might have been cast member parking. I forget. Mm. Um, but it, it was, yeah, it's, I think it was some trees and some cast member parking there. So okay. it wasn't, uh, it wasn't impeding into the guests quite as much. Right. Well, some say like if they want a huge parking lot. Yeah, the the, the themes. <clears throat> if they wanted to come up with new themes or new sections or something like that, they're kind of impeded by the, the what they've already basically expanded as far as they can. So they would have to go the route of redoing certain sections if they wanted to come up with something new down the road. Kind of like with Splash Mountain, you change it to, to Tiana's because they can't. There's no section to put a new mm-hmm. ride for her. You know. Right. Eventually, I mean, that's that's the case with a lot of things. Like, okay, Splash Mountain being the exception, mm-hmm. but Norway, great movie ride. Um, those good, great movie ride was a, also a slight exception because that ride was still bringing people in, but it was a slow moving ride. And the other thing with um, big uh, great movie ride is that Disney at that time did not own most of the the ip shown in that so they were having to pay other people for that attraction mm-hmm. so financially that attraction was making less and less sense over the years so it made sense okay let's close that out put in something that will be able to handle some more people newer technology and our own ip so we don't have to pay someone else for our our attraction and it was also starting to get a little dated. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's a, some of the rights. I'm assuming they have uh, the, the higher ups are counting how many people they're getting through on these rides. But I'm wondering some of these these rides that have been there forever. Um, it, people go on. The, their numbers could be skewed a little bit because they don't want to wait on an hour ride. So they'll go on that with, on the older ride that they've been on a million times. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's a shorter that. line. So they're going to go on it. So. Right. You know, but I'm sure if uh, what the heck, what's the uh, the, the, uh, the the one where you're sitting and it just a journey through time with the with the guy and his dog. Carousel of Progress. Carousel of Progress. Let's say that one. I'm assuming that's been there forever. So it, it's it, been there quite a while. Um, that one is it's got a weird situation around it. Um, 
you know, people aren't always lining up for that. It is, it's a theater, so you can fill the theater, and you, can, you get through a fair amount of people, um, but it, it's not a high-intensity amount of people or anything like that. But it's also, and they haven't updated in a while. Yeah. When that That's really starting to show. But it is one of the few attractions that has a, a exact direct connection to Walt, because that was Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. He designed that ride for uh, Okay. And they brought that over from Disneyland to Disney World. So, I mean, it is, you know. So that's one that they probably won't pull out, but they might update, you know, bring it in. Because I'm, I'm trying to think. It's one of those weird kind of, there's that constant battle with, okay, we could do something with this. And we, do, you know, don't you dare touch it. It is bolts. Yeah. So it's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of get that, that whole little battle there. Yeah. Um, I mean, because I wonder, part, is that a you know, you wonder if that that is the constant battle that they're having with you know, hey, we could pull in a great new attraction in this section, but we can't, we're handcuffed because it's Walt. You know what I mean? Well, and that, and kind of that, that's the other thing with that attraction too, um, because you have Space Mountain on the other side of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be able to, you know, it's it's a round, small show building. It's mm-hmm. not a huge building that they, you know, they can go in and, and put something in. It's kind of like the, the little trouble that they're having with Alien Encounter. Um, Stitches, mm-hmm. uh, Stitches Escape, Alien Encounter, Mission to Mars, Mission to the Moon. All those attractions in the same building. You have two theaters um, that had a bunch of seats that people sat down and watched this show going on in the, the center of it. Not a super big show building, so you can't really put a moving attraction in there easily. Right. So what you know, what do you do that's going to generate a constant flow through, keep people moving? That's going to draw people in. Um, they were thinking of Wreck-It Ralph at one point. Mm. It's like a movie underperformed. It's like, okay, what do we do? Um, yeah. So that that's and that's now been sitting empty now for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's um they they have that dilemma delum- that there's a lot of space in Magic Kingdom that they can utilize still for for additional stuff. It's just a matter of what and what makes sense and it isn't going to be a, a a huge huge undertaking because even just saying off of it, between the Carousel of Progress and Buzz Lightyear there there was a stage there. They even blocked that off, and that there's a dead area of the Magic Kingdom there mm-hmm. that could fit a fair amount of people. You could put a restaurant there, right? Um, and they they just haven't done anything with that either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, I'm glad I'm not in charge of that stuff because it's you want to keep. You want to keep giving these because last year was Guardians. People went. That was a big draw. This year it's going to be Tron. That's going to be the big draw. And then what the following year to be uh, Tiana's ride if it's open in 24 or whatever. But you know what I mean. Like it, you, d- d- you want to keep those. Con- you don't want the parks to get stale and people not go because there's nothing new because everybody's been there and done that. Or you're going to get the crowd. It, it might last like maybe a couple years because you're going to get those people that I'm going to wait a couple years. Like I was going to do it Rise of the Resistance. You know, I'm going to wait like five years until people stop going to it. <laughs> and then I'll pop on to it, you know. So, but eventually you, you got to keep the park fresh. But how do you do it when you're on limited space and in t- time? So, yeah. And, and, but then that's kind of also one of the issues that, you know, as far as we know, so they have Tron opening. They have the thing in uh, the, the Moana Journey mm-hmm. of Water in Epcot. Yeah. You have the Tiana refit. That's it. Yeah. I mean, what what's beyond that? And then you have their neighbors down the road building a whole new park. Who's who's um who's Universal? Who? Oh, really? Did yeah, the Epic Universe. Wow. Which is gonna have the Super Nintendo World, Classic Monsters, more Harry Potter, um, all that type of stuff in there. So it's oh, like okay, they can't be happy with that. Yeah, what's either they are 
they have something that they're not tipping their hat to yet, or they have nothing and they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. So we yeah, shall that's, see. That's going to pull some people from them, boy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not a good thing. No. No. But they'll still, trust me, it's Disney. They're still going to get their people there. Oh, yeah. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're working on something, I'm sure. They yeah. just haven't told us yet. Right. But it's enough. It's going to be enough people that that's going to go to that new 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 place. That's not going to Disney and the Disney people yep. in charge are not going to like that. So, nope. <laughs> exactly. So, on that note, again. Um, yeah. So Splash Mountain, we knew you well. Uh, we wish you well. Thank you for the memories. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the many wet pairs of shorts and T-shirts. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, you will live on in our memories. Absolutely. And Tiana, we'll we'll see you soon. Yes. Can't wait. <laughs> hopefully on time and on schedule. And hopefully on knock on wood. <laughs> on time indeed. Yes. Dave, thank you much uh, for joining us again. Yes. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, on to the next. Sounds good. Well, that will do it for our show this week, folks. Thank you for listening. Thank you for Dave for joining us. Let us know your thoughts and expectations of Splash Mountain and the change over to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Join the conversation on our social networks. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash WDMagicCast. On Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, we are also at WDMagicCast. Make sure you also find our YouTube channel, which is at WDMagicCast as well. You can hear the audio versions plus some other other special things that we have on there as well. You can leave us a voice message through the Anchor app or anchor.fm website or record a message and email it electronically. Record it on your smartphone, your tablet, your one of your your computer, or whatever device you have, and email to email at wdmagicast.com. This way you can be heard on the show as well. You can also email us with any questions or suggestions you may have to that address as well, which is email at wdmagicast.com. Links to all these are in the show notes and our website, which is www.wdmagicast.com. I want to thank you for your time. I know how little time we all have, and knowing that we get to spend some of it together means a lot to us. I cannot thank you enough, but I can please ask you, Go on to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a rating and review to help other people find out about the show. Or if you don't want to do that or can't do that, share it out on the social networks. Tweet it out, post it on Facebook, share a link to the show to help others to find out about WD Magicast. Tell your friends, tell anyone you know that are big Disney people. Because the more people listening to WD Magicast, the better. Walt believes in a big Disney family, and so do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show while you're at it. This way you always know when a new episode is posted. And while you're at it, consider becoming a premium subscriber. Truly help the show out. Keep things coming. Keep, let us do some more, more things and uh, reviews. New equipment. Really help the show out. Really help support us. You can do this over at anchor.fm slash wdmagicast slash support. Or find our Patreon page. You can also check out our merchandise shop. Get yourself some really cool WD Magicast stuff as well while you're at it. This way you promote the show. You help the show out. You do a whole bunch of stuff. And you get some cool stuff as well. You get mugs, travel mugs, notebooks, hoodies, onesies. You you name it. They they got a lot of stuff. It's it's really awesome. And it's, it's great stuff too. It's really some some good merchandise you can find the links to all these in the show notes because remember this show is brought to you by listeners like you in japan broken objects are often repaired with gold the flaws is seen as a unique piece of the object's history which adds to its beauty consider this the next time you feel broken remember it is okay to ask for help but never give up That is not okay. Never give up. Never give in. Be your own hero. And let the world see your true beauty. 
Now I'd like to end this week's show with, with a quote, of course, by Walt Disney. Which, no more appropriate quote than this one for this episode. Disneyland will never be complete. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. And that's Walt Disney. Thank you again for listening, everyone. And I'll see you next time.